Hi guys, God bless you, God bless you, yet another evening again in God's presence, praise God. Um, but before I kind of just start sharing, but I just want to just share this, just give me a second, let me just uh, share this video. Hallelujah, thank you Lord Jesus. Blessed be God, hallelujah. Let me just share this video for a second, just give me one minute. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your holy name, Father God. We honor you, Lord Jesus. We honor you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, sweet Spirit of God. Lord, we bless your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your holy name. Hallelujah. Wow. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So you're welcome to day 17 of our 40-day fast for... Uh, we're fasting and praying for revival to break out in UK, in Europe, in um, Africa, in Australia, in Asia. We're praying for revival in North and South America. We're praying for revival in all the world. So we're just trusting God for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, if my people who are called, hi, good evening, Tracy, God bless you. Scripture says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their sinful ways, it says, I will hear from heaven, I will heal their land. So we're praying for God to heal our lands. We're praying for God to move in his power and his might. He has done this before. He will do it again. The Bible says, I sought for a man. So God is seeking for people that will seek his face, that will call upon him day and night. The Bible says, give him no rest. Call upon him day and night until he makes Israel a praise in the earth, Amen. until he makes the church a praise in the earth. So we give him no rest. We're going to bombard heaven day and night. We're going to weep before the altar of God. We're going to chastise ourselves. We're going to say, Lord, you know, you must come down. You must do something. Lord, you must pour out your spirit upon all flesh. Lord, you must... Awaken hearts once again. Lord, let there be an outpouring. Let there be an, a mighty move of God, Lord, in the name of Jesus. That is our prayer. That's our heart cry. And we're saying, Father God, do it again. Lord, you've done it in time past. You will do it again in our generation. We will see the kingdom come. We will see your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We will see mighty miracles. We will see signs and wonders happen. We will see blind eyes open. We will see deaf ears open. We will see the cripples walk. We will see the dead be raised. We will see demons cast out. We will see the goodness of God. We will see the hand of the Lord. The Bible says we shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. In the mighty name of Jesus, God will show himself strong, the Bible says, on behalf of them whose heart is steadfast towards him. So let's just begin to pray and intercede and seek his face. Father, Lord, we just seek your face right now, Father. We ask you to move in your power, move in your glory, move like never before. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for hearing our prayer, Father. We just say, come, Holy Spirit. Come in your power. Come in your might, Lord. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So we're going to worship in Jesus' name. We're going to sing Reckless Love by Corey Ashbury. 
and uh, we just trust God that God will receive our praise and worship. I love worship because it's just an, an opportunity to engage again with the kingdom of God. The Bible says, let us enter his courts with praise. Let us enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Hallelujah. Okay. <laughs>
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. That was good. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the awesome worship. In Jesus' name. So we're going to be talking today about healing. And um, obviously, healing is a topic I love so much. Um, I love preaching about healing. I love ministering healing. So we're going to be talking today about healing being the children's bread. You know, Jesus said healing is the children's bread. So if you're a believer, healing belongs to you. It is your right as a child of God for you to be healed. And there's one step ahead, you know, from being healed is actually for you to be whole to the point where you actually don't get sick anymore. You can actually live in a state where you actually don't fall sick. So, well, healing generally is a children's bread. And we know sickness and disease came into the world through sin. So when Adam sinned, when sin came into the world, sickness and disease, which is basically death or incipient death, came as well into the world. When death came, sickness and disease came as well. So we know that before the fall, before Adam fell, there was no sickness or disease. There is no sickness or disease in heaven. So, that's what the Bible says, let us pray, let it be on earth as it is in heaven. So we can actually live our lives like heaven on earth today. We can live our lives in such a place where sickness and disease cannot attach itself to our bodies. Now, it doesn't mean they don't try to attack you. It doesn't mean sickness and disease will not try to come on you, but it will not attach itself. It cannot stay on you. You know, John G. Lake walked in such a revelation of healing to the point where he actually, his story goes that there was a there was a virus, there was a, people were dying, I don't know what kind of virus it was, people were dying from, but it was, it was, a, it was a contagious disease, which means if it touches your body, you, you instantly get infected and you'll be dead within a few days. And he said to them, you know, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set him free from the law of sin and death, that sickness and disease cannot live on his body. And he challenged them and he said, no, they should bring you know, one of the mucus from, from the dead corpse, you know, the thing was still alive, the bacteria, the, the, the infection, the bacteria was still alive. And they put it on a microscope, they could see it was alive, it was moving around. And then he said, put it on my arm, and they put it on his arm. They could look at it on the microscope as they put it on his arm, and it died on his arm. It died on his hand, because the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus that was flowing in his body killed instantly the death that was trying to come on him. That's the power, that's the revelation, that is the knowledge of who we are. That's, that's what we're talking about. That we should walk in such a revelation knowledge of who we are, that sickness and disease cannot attach itself to us. Jesus, obviously, is our ultimate example. We know that sickness and disease could not attach itself to him. No devil, no demon in hell could attach itself unto him. He is the Son of God, and he is our example. And the Bible says, as he is right now, so are we in this world. As he is in heaven... Right now, the Bible says, as he, as he is in heaven, sickness or disease cannot touch him. In the same way, sickness and disease should not be able to attach itself to us. The Bible says, if the spirit of him who raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, that same spirit shall give life to your mortal body. So the spirit of God on the inside of us, the Bible says, will revitalize or re rejuvenate or bring to life our mortal bodies. So you can live in such a revelation of divine health and healing that your body begins to renew itself day by day. Moses was so exposed to the glory of God that he couldn't die. Do you realize that? Moses was so, this is old covenant. He was in the old covenant. He got so exposed to the glory of God. When the Bible says his face shone, he was in the glory for 40 days. He was so exposed to the glory of God that his Bible says his natural strength was not abated. It says his eyes did not grow dim. The sickness and disease could not dwell. He was growing stronger and stronger day by day. The man was growing stronger. Why? Because of the glory of God that he was, that he was exposed to constantly. He was walking and living. And this is a man under the old covenant. He had a measure of the glory. Yet he walked in such a revelation of that glory that his physical body could not die. God had to literally kill him because says, this guy is not going to die naturally. He couldn't die. He said to Moses, come up to this mountain, I'm going to kill you. And you're going to come to me. And that was it. He didn't die of sickness or disease. He just went up to God and God just killed him. And God just took him home. So what am I trying to say? We can walk in such a revelation of the, of the power, of the healing, of the knowledge of who we are in Christ. 
that sickness and disease has no, no, no attachment. You can live above it. That's what I'm trying to say. Yes, we believe in healing. You know, we believe that we should be prayed for when we get sick. But there's a revelation. The Bible says the word of God is, is medicine. The Bible says it's, it's, it's nourishment. The word of God should be health to your bones. It's nourishment to your bones. God's word should be like medicine for your bones. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I want to read a scripture where, where Jesus talked about healing being the children's bread in Matthew uh, chapter 15 from verse 22 to 20, 29. Matthew 15, 22 to 20, 29. Matthew 15. Scripture says, 22 says, And behold, it says, and when, 21, it says for 21, And Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And Behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying. Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying after us. And he answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt down before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. And she said unto him, Yes, Lord, even the dogs eat from the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, O oh woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you have desired. And her daughter was healed instantly. And her daughter was healed instantly. Hallelujah. The Bible, Jesus said, healing is the children bread it's not good to take the children's bread of healing and give it to dogs so what is jesus trying to say obviously this woman should have been offended this woman should have been you know annoyed that jesus called out her dog but she overlooked the offense and decided to press him for her, the healing of her daughter that was demonized and the bible says she was he by her faith she pressed in she received the miracle when it was not time for the Gentiles to begin to receive healing miracles. But this woman went ahead of time. Her faith superseded the program of God and actually went and got her healing for her daughter, even when there wasn't time for the Gentiles to receive um, the healing virtue or the healing grace of God. How awesome is our, our message for God? He overlooks. His faith, faith moves God. I think that's one thing to realize when it comes to healing. When it comes to healing, begging and crying is not going to help you. Begging and crying is not, is not going to help you. It is faith that moves God. It's not begging and crying. It's faith. And Jesus responded when he saw her faith. He said, oh woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you have desired. This woman's faith was able to grasp or get the healing from Jesus even when it wasn't her time for her to receive a healing or miracle. And she got the healing for her daughter. Her daughter was healed instantly. So, Another woman that took her healing without Jesus' permission is the woman with the issue of blood. And we can see that story in Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5 is a story. There's a story there about the woman with the issue of blood. And the Bible says, from verse 21. And Jesus had crossed again <coughs> in the boat to the other side. A great crowd gathered about him and he was beside the sea. And when he came to the rulers of the synagogue, and, he, and there came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and seeing him, he fell at his feet and implored him earnestly, saying, My daughter, my little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and, and live. And he went with him. So Jesus was on his way to heal Jairus' daughter. And a great crowd followed him and a throng about him. And there was a woman who had, been a, who had had a discharge of blood for 12 years, who had suffered very much under many physicians and had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. And she heard the report about Jesus and came behind in a crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if I touch even his garment, I will be made whole or made well. And immediately the fountain of blood dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus, perceiving in himself that virtue or power had gone out of him, immediately turned around in the crowd and said, 
who touched my garments? And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing around you and you say, yet you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith, not my faith, not Jesus' faith. Jesus said, it is your faith that has made you whole. Your faith has given you this healing. Hallelujah. How awesome is that? Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. Go in peace and be healed. Hallelujah. Of your disease. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. That's so amazing. The woman's faith bought her healing. The woman's faith got her healing. Even when she was not supposed to be in that crowd, she was by law, she should, she should have been stoned if she was found out. A woman with issue of blood walking around, touching people. Basically, she was making them unclean according to the law. But she pressed in beyond above all odds. You know, at the risk of her own, her own life, she pressed in and she got her miracle. Exodus 15, 26. Let's read what it says here. Exodus 15, 26 is about a God who is the Lord who heal us, heals us. Exodus 15, verse 26. Scripture says, And if you will, if you will diligently listen to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes and give ear to his commands and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you that I put on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord your healer. It says, I will put, actually the real, the, the, the original uh, Hebrew of that word or that verse actually reads, I will permit. So God doesn't put sickness or disease on people. He says, I will permit, or I will not permit you to be sick, you know, with the diseases that afflicted Egypt. I will not permit it to come on you. So, for I am the Lord your healer. I am Jehovah Rapha. That's the first place God revealed the name Jehovah Rapha to the people of Israel as the God who heals. 1 Peter 2.24, the Bible says, Who himself took our own sins in his body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Hallelujah. The Bible says, this is Peter looking at the cross, looking back to the cross where our healing took place. So your healing took place at the cross. So this is, a, this is the revelation of healing that we need to understand is that we are not trying to get healed. Now this is where most people don't understand where, how healing works. Healing, when he talks about healing, you are, if you are sick in your body today, you are not the sick that is trying to get healed. You are the healed in Christ that the devil is trying to make sick. Jesus cannot be sick. You live in Jesus. Your life is hid in Christ, in God. If Jesus cannot be sick, if God cannot be sick, you cannot be sick because your life is hidden in Christ, in God. So the devil trying to afflict your body with sickness or disease is illegal. It's not, it's illegal for the devil to touch your body with any form of sickness or disease. So that's why you resist him. The Bible says, whom you resist, steadfast in the faith. If you resist the devil, the Bible says he will flee from you. When you reject that sickness or disease, don't claim it for one second. Don't say, oh, my headache, oh, my this, or whatever. No, it's not yours. Don't claim it. Reject it. Resist it. Rebuke it in Jesus' name. Are we against doctors? No, we're not against doctors. We're not against medicine. If you, if you feel you need to take your medicine to feel better, maybe you're having a headache, you want to feel better, fine, take your medicines. But believe God, hallelujah. Because those doctors, those medicines cannot heal you. It is God that heals. Even doctors will tell you themselves. They don't have the power to heal. It is nature. They, they call it nature. Oh, nature does its own work. Oh, nature, with the body will heal itself. It's God that heals us. So we can accelerate that process. We can accelerate the natural process. What if there's an incurable disease? What if it's something that the doctors cannot, cannot help? What are you going to do? You know, this is why I think in Africa there's so much faith because they don't have any choice. Most people in Africa, it's either you believe God or you die. There's no two ways about it. You just have to believe God. And that's why there's so much faith and trust in God. But in the Western world, because we have the, you know, we have our, you know, uh, national health systems, we have our, you know, we have insurance, we have doctors, we have medicine. So we have alternatives. So we have options. But if you come to the point where you come to the end of yourself, yes, those things are great. Those things are good. We need to use the facilities and the things that God has revealed and helped you know, medicines and doctors to find, yes, even God even used 
medicine in the Bible. Go and read the Bible, see clearly. You know, there was when, when um, I think it was King Hezekiah was sick with a boil. I think it was uh, uh, Prophet Isaiah said to them, you know, make a, make a, you know, the, he found a leaf and he told them to put it on the boil. So he put the leaves on the boil and the man was healed. So we could see that God even used medicine in the Bible, you know, but, 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 but we need to trust God. Your faith should be in God. Have faith in God. Hallelujah. Don't put your trust in man. Don't put your trust in medicines or whatever it is. Use them, but don't, don't put your, your faith should be in God. Yes, God can use that, you know, to help you, but have faith in God. Hallelujah. Blessed be God. Anyway, I'm not going to preach more because I think I spent all my time talking. Um, but yeah, healing is the children's bread. Healing is your bread. It is your heritage. As a child of God, there's so many scriptures about healing that I can't go into right now. The atonement, obviously, is another great one. You know, Isaiah 53, that's so important. That's so foundational to our healing. Our, the knowledge of our healing is by his stripes we were healed. And that's in Isaiah 53, verse 4 to 6 says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. He didn't say we are going to be healed, no, he says we are healed by his stripes, by his wound, we are already healed. So you are already healed by God. You may not feel it, you may not see it. But the reality is in the spirit, your spirit man is healed. You can, you, can, you can release what's in your spirit to come out into your natural flesh. And the Bible says, if the spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, that same spirit shall give life to your mortal bodies. From your spirit, you can receive divine health in Jesus' name. As you take communion every day, every day I take communion throughout this fast. The Lord led me to take communion every day. So every day I take communion. As I take communion, I say to myself, I say, this is the body of Christ that was broken for my healing. This is the blood of Jesus that was shed for the remission of my sins and for my righteousness. So by his body, I am healed. And by his blood, I am made righteous. And I take my communion and I trust the Lord that my body is being renewed. My strength is being renewed. My healing is secure. My strength is secure in Jesus' name. My, I'm, I don't even feel hungry during this fast. That's so amazing. It's so supernatural that even throughout the fast, I don't feel hungry because um, my body is being sustained by the power of God, by the grace and the glory of God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Oh, I just want to bless you. Father, Lord, we bless everyone listening right now that they will begin to understand the revelation that healing is the children's bread. We don't have to beg. We don't need to fight. We don't need to strive to be healed. It's ours by, by default, by being in Christ Jesus. We are the healed of God. We are not the sick trying to get healed. We are the healed. The devil is trying to get sick. So right now, if there's any of your children listening to, to me under the sun, right now in this broadcast, by virtue of listening to this message, healing virtue is being released right now in Jesus' name. Every sickness and disease is coming out of their bodies right now in Jesus' name. Every headache is gone. Every migraine is gone right now in Jesus' name. Every afflicting spirit Loose them right now. Let them go. In Jesus' name, I command every fun every body, every, every function, every organ of your blood, every organ of your body to begin to function properly in the name of Jesus. By the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. So right now, receive your healing. Be whole in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayer. Thank you, Lord, for revival. We know revival is already here. Lord, we pray for harvesters we pray for people to be raised up that will go out into the nations go out into the world and reap this great harvest of souls coming into the kingdom i pray for the churches to be ready i pray that believers be ready for this mighty outpouring of god for this mighty move of god that is already upon us lord we set our net we mend our nets Right now, we are mending our nets, Lord. We are setting our houses on, in order. We are setting aside every form of, uh, uh, um, you know, every form of malice, of, of disunity. We are casting it aside. Lord, we are here to help one another. Just as Peter and John were called their neighbors to come and help them catch and bring in the fish. So we are calling every believer right now, every church, every born again child of God. You are being summoned by God to come and bring in such a great harvest. This end time habit, this end time move of God. Everyone has been called to be a fisherman. You are a fisherman for God. You are called to win souls into the kingdom of God. We only have this earth in which to win souls. We don't win souls in heaven. We only have right now to reach out to the lost and win the lost. 
So it's an awesome opportunity. It's a great time to be alive today that we can go out and win the lost for Jesus. So God bless you. Thank you for joining us. And I'll see you again same time tomorrow for another awesome time of prayer, of intercession, of, of the word of exaltation and worship in Jesus mighty name. Have a wonderful night, wonderful day, wherever you are in Jesus name. God bless you. Good night. Take care guys. God bless you. Bye. And also just before I go, there's a link at the top there, a donate button. Um, give offerings, you know, we can we'll gladly receive your offerings that you give, whatever free will offerings the Lord lays upon your heart to give. Please do give. Um, Lord reward you bless, greatly and bless you. If you want to be a monthly partner with us, click on the link and become a monthly partner. Uh, we are currently right now planning towards a hosting a revival, a week of revival in Aberdeen in Scotland. And we'll be up in um, Elgin as well, um, up north. So we're going to have um, Tom Scalera. He's an awesome revivalist. He's a man who works in miracles. He's a revivalist. He's carrying such a great power and grace, grace upon his life. We'll also be um, hosting um, Art Thomas from America as well, the two American evangelists. So we'll be having them in Aberdeen. We'll be having them in Scotland. Um, it's going to be a mighty outpouring of God. We're going to be myself as well. I'll be ministering as well as Pastor Phil Sanderson. We'll be ministering as well. Um, as well as uh, Stephen Finney, um, pastor at River Church Elgin and uh, River Church uh, Aberdeen will be hosting us. Also, we're going to be having worship by the amazing Alan Lepit. Um, he's going to be, he's the, he's the director of the stirring and they'll be leading worship for us. It's going to be an amazing, amazing time of glory encounter, of worship, of miracles, of healing signs and wonders. We will see the kingdom of God come. We will see many, many healings happen. We'll see many people be set free and delivered uh, from the powers of darkness in that whole week. So um, if you live in Aberdeen, if you live in Glasgow, if you live in Edinburgh, if you live in Scotland, you are welcome. Do come, make plans to attend this week of revival, the Kingdom Come Conference and the School of, of Healing, the School of Prophecy as well. Um, it's going to be amazing, amazing, amazing. I tell you, you don't want to miss this. You really don't want to miss this. We, we've been praying for such a long time for such programs to come to the northeast of Scotland. And God has answered our prayer. And we'll be having such awesome meetings and revival meetings in the northeast of Scotland. So you're welcome. Um, do support us. Do so. We are looking for uh, those partners who will partner with us to help host this event. Obviously, there's bills to pay for the event. So please so as the Lord lays upon your heart to give. Give and you'll be rewarded. Give, the Bible says, and it shall be given back unto you good measure. Press down, shaking together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom in Jesus' name. So God bless you. Have a wonderful night, wonderful evening, wonderful day, wherever you are, all over the world, in Jesus' name. Take care, guys. God bless you. Bye.